Good morning, Funky Phil. Good morning, Corey. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is episode 30 of that thing we call the Drum Brigade podcast. Yes. People. Oh, baby. Episode 30, Phil. It's awesome. Gosh. We're like Mike and Mike. Dude. <laughs> we're basically Radio Lab. We're pretty much Radio Lab. <laughs> yeah. Like. Dude, yes. things are moving and a shaking for Drum Brigade. I am telling you, we got Lambo appointments after this. <laughs> <laughs> what color is your Lambo going to be, dude? Oh, it's going to be like that really obnoxious green. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, the most annoying looking. I don't care how much Lambo money I possible. ever have, I will never. Maybe I'll rent one, but I'll never have one. Those are the dumbest cars ever. But when we were like six or seven years old, you know we were like, when oh, I get my Lambo. Every kid had one of those. <laughs> yeah, the Countach poster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo. Getting a Countach. <laughs> uh, Come on, we'll be Lambros. <laughs> we should totally be Lambros. Lambros. I wonder if anybody's gotten a Lambro and just, and just jumped it off a cliff. Probably. There's, there's some, some rich, crazy full. rich people. Yeah. Oh, man. Well... I'm going to get one after the show because we are killing it right now. So whether I like it or not, uh, this is drum brigade podcast. As I mentioned, it is me, Corey Kingston sitting across from me, drinking a fresh cup of coffee with some Colombian sugar. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Colombian sugar, baby. Uh, it's funky, fantastic Fallbrook, funky Phil. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Funky <laughs> Phil. <laughs> How's it going? Funky Phil good man it's a crazy week yeah a lot of uh a lot of stuff going on a lot of ups and downs a lot of good things a lot of bad things not Not so many bad bad things things. yeah it was was mostly goods oh that's cool we had the time change yesterday which sucks well you did it oh (laughs) really i'm just gonna give you a warning bro (laughs) the time change this is going to be the show of soapboxes. <laughs> and this is the first one. This stupid time change. Do you hear my voice? Yeah, you sound really angry. No, I'm very tired, Phil. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this stupid... T- what? Who like... What? <laughs> Whose idea was this? Whose idea was this? Gosh. Why do we have to change the time? And it's still winter. Yeah, it's still cold. I'm not barbecuing. I'm not going to the beach. I don't need extra daylight. Just keep it the same. I think it was for the farming industry, isn't it? I don't farm, Phil. I know. I That's what lights are for. Just put a light out there. Is it for the farm? I, know, I feel like <laughs> I have to look it up. Dude, I hate the stupid daylight savings change and time change. I hate it. I woke up today at 930 and I felt like I was rising from the dead. Mm. like what like what time is it it's 9 30 oh my gosh like dead to the world i don't understand whose idea was this oh man joe timekeeper look it up. is in a meeting like hear me out guys hear me out george hudson proposed Dude, the idea you stupid idiot george 1895. hudson 1895 1895 mm-hmm. 1895 and we're still doing it yeah. i've asked around like hey do you guys like the time change Everybody unanimously is like, we hate it. I wish we were like Arizona. Arizona is smart. They just keep it the same, dude. Keep it steady. Why? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) This is the first soapbox. (laughs) I don't understand this stupid time change. It's so dumb. And every year, I'm like, you know what? No, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm just going to keep my clock the same. And just move everything up an hour. Like, oh, I got to be to my gig at five now instead of six. Mm. That won't work. Just can we just like all as a society, just please band together like and stop with the time change. Can we, Phil? Let's stand together. Let's start a podcast called The Brotherhood of Keeping the Time Change the Same. Forget the brotherhood of drums. Forget the camaraderie. Forget all that stuff. 
Let's just keep the time the same. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. messing up everybody's world. Is it worse for drummers because we don't like it when the time I changes? I don't like it when the time changes. <laughs> just keep it the same. Dude, my wife is like sleeping still. Is she? Yeah, Damn. because she can't keep up with this. I can't, I can't keep up with this, dude. That's crazy. All I right. got up at seven today. Dude, that's really six, Phil. I know. What's up She's with that? not sleeping. She's awake. Oh. She just had update. a poker head out. Yeah, update. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got I got a soapbox about her today. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, that's the soapbox for the first one before we even so get the soap. That, that is bad, that Phil. Right I'll have to do some research because I I still don't understand. George all, Hudson, all you're all an the, idiot. <laughs> I don't understand all the reasons for it. Gosh, so. stop with the time change. All right, anyways, drum brigade to do show. With energy and. I, you know, listen, all you're doing is l- ruining my energy because I'm so dang tired now. <laughs> my whole day is shifted. Tell me about it. I, I, the day of the time change, we had um, Felix's official fifth birthday party. Nice. And yeah. Yeah. Bunk bed now. Yeah. We we moved it up. We had to do it earlier because it was supposed to rain. So uh, it was like, we, <laughs> it's kind of messed up. We, so it felt like everyone had to be at this birthday party at 9.30 in the morning. Oh, my gosh, dude. Because we started at 10.30. <laughs> dude. Uh, it was it was a long day. Was he stoked? Like, he was, was so pumped. Was there was so a bunch fun. of little kids running around? Yeah, little kids, pinata, cupcakes, <laughs> candy chips, bubbles. Oh, my gosh. All sorts of fun stuff. Dude. Um, yeah, my wife really did a great job of planning it. And I love that he's like... And, he does this face like when you get like like we've I brought him like a toy or something before and like he does this face where he cannot contain his excitement <laughs> and it's just like ah, 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 like freaking freaking out but like kind of silently like he doesn't know what to do he's so excited <laughs> yeah I know the face it's uh, so good it was a good day it was a long day but it was really it was really it was perfect man um well. I haven't done the intro of the show because I've already gotten into um, all this jazz about time changes, and it's got me rattled, Phil. (laughs) Gosh. (laughs) All right. Well, anyways, this Drum Brigade podcast, you can listen to it on a lot of different platforms. Uh, Right now, you can get it on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, YouTube, and DrumBrigade.com. You know all about the web show. It's coming. Uh, we got some things in the works. We got some things that we're hopefully planning, some ideas. Uh, but so far this week, breaking news, Funky Phil, we will be at the SoCal Drum Show with our own booth. Oh, yeah. Live broadcast, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to be there. You guys can come and hang out with us. We're going to have some giveaways. Uh, we're going to do a live show. Yeah. You can come and ask us live questions. Probably going to walk around and look at equipment. Yep. We're going to walk around, look at equipment. We're going to be making fun of everything. No. Yes, everything, <laughs> including vessel drums. We're going to be making fun of them. We're going to be making fun of them. No, we're going to have all these uh-huh. fools on. We're going to be... We have We have to brainstorm about this, Phil. Maybe we should just maybe, brainstorm on Maybe air. some listeners could give us some ideas. Yeah, and then... Cool if cool stuff to do, too. If you want us to do something or talk about something or anything, just we'll check out a piece out. of equipment. Yeah. I don't know. We'll probably... We'll, we'll have some fools on. Yeah. I, I'm going to be... <sighs> I, there's no telling what I'm gonna do. I might not even have pants on, dude. Ugh. To be honest, I don't care Shuff, anymore. Shuffle shorts. Shuffle shorts, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, we're gonna be hanging out and doing it. Um, so it's gonna be fun. And I don't really know what we have planned, but we're gonna have something planned. And then we might have some extra stuff planned, Phil. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say more than that. Um. So yeah, SoCal Drum Show, that's next month, April 14th. It's on a Sunday at the QLN building in Oceanside, California. That literally, I don't want any of you creeps knowing this, but that's literally like a mile from my house. I could walk there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, It's a fun show. I I went last year. You did a clinic last year. I did a clinic last year. Yeah. But it's kind of like a a really, it's like a mini NAM. There's like a bunch of different companies. Is there a lot of people that come? Like throughout the day, yeah, yeah. I think he had a really good turnout. I don't last know why. Year. I think the first year I had, um, this is the third year, right? I, th- I don't know. I think it might be this. This might be the second one. Oh, so then last up. year I had some. 
I had like either a tour I was on or something out of town date or something. I couldn't get out of it. And I was like, kind of like with the attitude of like, yeah, I'm too cool for this. Even though it's literally walking distance from my house. Um, which is a really lame out of attitude to have, but I just, the drum industry, you guys know my feelings on the drum industry. I just, man, I have a lot of opinions about that. So anyways, uh, this year though, he, Ed, like really like from drum flip really like, um, wants us there. He's like, gave us an offer. We couldn't refuse. I was like, yeah, I mean, we could do it. It's so, it's like, there's a drum, a SoCal drum show a mile from my house and I'm not going to go there and like promote my podcast and whatever else I do. Like I'll drive and find parking and do that whole song and dance with Nam but I'm not going to go to a SoCal drum show right down the street from my house. So I'm like, yeah, we kind of have to do it. Let's just do it. Even if we go there and we, you know, like, I don't know. We talked about a bunch of things. Even if we just go there and like say hi to people, it's worth it. You know? Yeah. So it's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, whatever helps us promote our show. Um, speaking of promoting our show, uh, the drum brigade podcast, we have a contest going on right now with some great companies, that are helping us out to give you some amazing products. Um, companies such as Haram. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Aquarian. Woo. Um, Brixton. Oh, baby. Woo. Booty Shakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's weird how our studio audience like claps exactly the same every time. Know, it's like, they just really got it dialed. <laughs> yeah, they really got it perfect. Um, who else? Uh, booty shakers. Uh, oh yeah. And uh, big bang distribution. Yeah. And we're working on some others. Drum brigade, of course. Yay. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank um, you very much. so yeah, we, we got them dialed. They're giving you guys some amazing stuff. <clears throat> we got some incredible products from Aquarian. Uh, we talked about that last week with, with, um, Chris and, um, they're going to be outfitting a whole kit of drums with, new reflector series heads. Um, they're going to be giving a kick drum set up for you guys and they're going to be giving a practice pad set up for you guys. So, uh, that's, in, that's insane. You buy so yourself rad. some drum brigade sticks or some Haram sticks and use them on that practice pad. You will be flying <laughs> through the drums, man. You will be like just perfect form. Uh, drum brigade. It's a community. It's a family. It's a place for drummers, drum enthusiasts, future drummers, and people who are just playing into music and culture to be among like-minded individuals. Drum Brigade is a way to support each other as fellow drummers by means to push each other to excel and expand horizons in a spirit of camaraderie rather than negative competition. Drum Brigade, we have products, t-shirts, sticks, stickers. Uh, we have some educational tools, uh, drum lessons, video lessons, Skype lessons, private lessons, sheet music, community events such as sheds um, and live broadcasts, all kinds of stuff, clinics. Um, we kind of like we'll do whatever it takes to support our community, which is the Brotherhood of Drums, Funky Phil. Yeah. Are you part of the Brotherhood of Drums? Of course. Me too. Me too. There was one other thing I needed to – oh, yeah, our personal stuff. Me and Funky Phil have personal websites. Uh, mine is www.coreykingston.com, K-O-R-E-Y. Funky Phil's website is philpardell.com. Mm -hmm. um, on Phil's website, you have lessons, sheet music, you have uh, play alongs, product reviews, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and you can get in touch with him if you want him to play in your band. <laughs> yeah. Um, same with mine. I have um, some info on my band. I have uh, a vlog that I do that's called A Day in a Life of a Drummer. Um, just uploaded a new episode from when I went to Vegas. Got another one to upload um, for my gig over the weekend. And uh, so go ahead and hit subscribe on our YouTube pages. We have lessons, all that stuff. Just support everything that me and Funky Phil do and everything that Drum Brigade does, and your life will be so much better. Trust me. Trust me. Um, all right. So, yeah, Drum Brigade dot com for all other information about our stuff come see us at the san diego drum show support the companies that are supporting us um one more time those companies are aquarian haram brixton um booty shakers tnr products uh big bang distribution ahead armor cases all that stuff all right 
Let's get into it, Funky Phil. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This week, Funky Phil, we have no guest. Sorry, people. It's just me and Phil. It's just us. Justice. But I mean, what more do you really need? <laughs> what more do you really need? Uh, I mean... Well, you got a lot of stuff to say. I got a lot of stuff today, to say, man. Right? We got, I got a lot of stuff to say. Um, this is the day of soapboxes. I have quite a few soapboxes. I think I've even got one today. Fucky Phil has even got a soapbox. So yeah. we're this is an angry episode. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, we got a topic of the day, um, which is about uh, this, auditions. What about the snare drum sitting in front we of us? We got a snare drum sitting in front of us that is absolutely hideous. I think I need to post a picture of it. Listen, spawn is cool. Whatever, man. I used to play spawn drums. I still have a spawn kit, but this snare drum is awful. I don't know what I was thinking. In front of me is a Swiss cheese snare. It's red with white hardware. Oh, it's red sparkly. Bro, but 10 years ago, this snare was like super fire. But right now, this snare sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounds awful. It sounds awful. I know, like, when I, when I had this snare built, these guys were like, why do you, like, you know that these snares, like, don't sound good. And I'm like, yeah, so. Um, but I, I, I needed it for Warp Tour, and I was, I was playing with the Agrolite, so it needed to be, like, real ringy and, and uh, I don't know, timbali sounding. I used to get it to sound good. People used to comment on it all the time, but, man, what a horrible snare. <laughs> not cool in any way it's embarrassing i'm, I'm posting a, a poll would you play this on a gig yes perfect <laughs> perfect yeah Let's see what people say um so that's that uh so we, we can talk about it a little bit later um funky phil yeah how's your week my friend it was good man you know i had some well <laughs> are we getting into it now yeah if it's <laughs> Phil, 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 Phil. I ain't trying to hear that right now. All right. <laughs> I don't so do rare. a lot of these, <laughs> but sometimes I just got to get it off my chest, you know? That's what I'm all about, I, Funky Phil. <laughs> and this week, I played at two different places that both were tricked into buying the same god-awful electronic drum set. <laughs> <laughs> by a brand called Elisis. Just kidding. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think what keeps happening is they look great on paper. Oh, because they're inexpensive. They're inexpensive. Well, but they're still expensive. We're still talking about upwards of like seventeen hundred bucks. That's for, too much. Some of them are like over two grand Listen, for this for this setup. And, that's sixteen fifty too much, buddy. <laughs> and I I think a lot of places are getting you know, they're getting tricked because of some of the features seem like, oh, that's on that's on the higher end spectrum of this other brand. Like individual outputs for each drum or yeah. something. You know? <laughs> Like that kind of stuff where it's they they think, oh, well, the sound guy really wants each tom to be able to adjust each tom. How much do they really adjust each tom? I don't know. Never. They don't even do it. Yeah. Anyway, um, these drums are so bad. Yeah. They're so bad. Like I never, I used to just be like, I hate all electronic drums pretty much. Mm -hmm. And um, after, you know, having a good amount of gigs on various brands, like, I haven't done too much with the Yamaha, I must admit. Yeah. I've heard good things, but I've done a good amount of work with Roland ones and a and good amount with these Elisis ones. And let me tell you, yeah. just buy the, the whatever the Roland one is at the same price point, and it's 10 times better. Yeah. It just, I don't know. It's that, still not good. The Elise, It's still not great, but... But it's better than the Elisis. I mean, the, the Elisis ones, dude, the triggers die so quick. All the pads, like, like I went, one of my gigs, when they first got this set, it came with, like, four toms and a whole mess of symbols, like, robo symbols and stuff. <laughs> now they've got two toms. Wow. 
Because yeah. they've all died. Because they've all died, or the snare drum has died, and they've replaced the snare with a trombone. And Unbelievable. Like the, oh, my God, dude, this one. So the one gig, the uh, mesh head must have split or something. So rather than replace it, well, the mesh head and the, the felt on the kick beater vanished somehow. <laughs> so uh, I don't know which came first. <laughs> I, have, uh, I, have, you know, I have my suspicions, but either way. They had gaff tape all over the front of the. Of oh no, the, that's of the totally going to work. <laughs> and then they had gaff tape all around the beater. What the heck, dude? So you probably see where this is going. <laughs> my 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 kick beater half the gig was stuck to of the friggin' it was. head. <laughs> so there's all these so many awkward moments on on this gig, like where I'm like playing and oh. the kick beater is just literally stuck to the head. I. And oh I can't gosh. hit it again. So there was a lot of dropped. There was a lot of crashing without a kick drum. Of course there was. There's a lot of really awkward sounding fills that should have had some kicks in there. <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of moments where there was no kick on oh. one or on three or on, you know, any of the. <laughs> oh, my Med- gosh. Entire dude. measures flew by with no kick drum at all that needed, definitely should have had some. Dude. Anyway, my point is. If you are a business looking to go robo <laughs> to really dial in the control of the drum volume, please do not buy these Elises. Maybe just drums. don't go robo. Maybe don't go robo. Yeah. Maybe just get drummers that can play quiet. Thank I don't you. know. But if you got to go robo, please, please stay away from those Elises ones. They're and, terrible. Until they, and they've all got like, I don't know if it's, I think. They do like actual samples of drums in there. Mm-hmm. Like it'll be like actual Zildjian symbols. Like and branded. the Elisis, really? Yeah, you can like I've set up my own custom kits to try to really do what I can to make them sound decent. Mm-hmm. And like they've got like Yamaha drum samples and all sorts of different drum samples. But I don't. I think Roland does just full synthesis. So uh, they're every time you hit it, it's creating a sound. Uh, through the brain where the Elisis one is just playing a sample. Yeah. And they sample it at a bunch of different volumes and, and you know, and stuff to try to get the full dynamic spectrum, but it's not the same. Uh, this, I think that something about the, the synthesizing makes it smoother, even though you're not, it's not a recording of a real drum. It right. somehow works. It just feels better and it's more natural for electronic drums. I mean, it's still, but it's not the real thing. But I've had my moments of like big soapbox moments with those stupid Roland V drums, like at Paula. Oh yeah, those are horrible garbage drums, dude. But I I subbed at Paula somewhat recently, and <clears throat> it's like night and day. Even with those, <laughs> even with those, they've been beat to hell, uh, and they're still like 10 times better than the Elisis God, ones. I'm I sorry hate. Elisis, I, I, you know, maybe if you hear this, maybe you'll you can do some prove us wrong. Yeah, send us, us an Elisis us so we us, can light it on fire and throw it in the garbage. Send us one that actually <laughs> works really well and it would be a pleasure to play on a gig for weeks and months. Yeah. I I wonder how their multi pad is. Like if it's as bad as their electronic drums cuz I've See, seen some good reviews about that. I'm scared. I know, but cuz I'm to me, skeptical. To me the the issue is the triggers. Yeah. Like the like the pad that's what seems to be one of the major sticking points to mm-hmm. me is the triggers fail so quick. Yeah. And like the hi hat is god awful. Like well, it just doesn't I mean those are always notorious, but this one is just like a whole another scale. <laughs> It's, it's, they can never get no electronic company can get the hi hat right. No one can get the hi hat right. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know. It's oh my gosh. I mean, I think they should just lose the whole trying to make it look and operate like a hi hat thing. Mm-hmm. Get rid of it. Like yeah. Whenever I feel like whenever they have those two robo pads that clap oh, together like symbols, it's worse. It's somehow worse somehow than the cheaper one, which is just a pad and a completely separate I don't foot need mechanism. It. Yeah, I don't need it to rise up. I it's just I can lift my foot just digitally make that happen, you know? Yeah. It's like weird. Well, Phil, anyway, that's my soapbox. I ain't trying to hear that. F right those now. drums. Bed condom. <laughs> Bed condom. <laughs> well, Phil, I'm glad you got that off your chest and I am I with better. you, man. I, I am better. with you. I am so with you, man. Suck. Dude, I hate electronic drums. That's that's basically like 
if I, first of all, what gigs are we playing where they're duct taping the bass drum head? Like, <sighs> and I, I admit some of it's the drummers that are playing them that are just bashing the hell out of these yeah. and destroying the sensors. But I mean, the same drummers bash the Roland ones and they yeah. don't seem to do as bad. No, that's, that's at least point. this has never really been. And like, look, man, I don't, I don't own anything, Alesis, and they don't sponsor our show, so I'm not. And like, I don't, I don't, you know, if they ever wanted to sponsor our show, I'm sorry that we're talking crap right now. But, anyways, they they never really claim to be like the high end elite, like pro level electronic drum company, right? They're like, mm-hmm. they're kind of like the, I can't. I, I don't know the Kia of drum of drum <laughs> electronic drums, even though Kias are kind of coming up now, you know. But like, no, I don't. You, yeah, they're they're kind of like trying to be, you yeah. know, fill that that void of of that price point. You yeah. want to get the higher end features at a lower price point, right? But you're getting a lower quality. Quality, yeah. Overall. So like, why these stupid like casinos and like places? That have all the money in the world. They're just raking in money from people. Yeah. Gambling. They cannot spend like an extra five hundred or thousand dollars to get something a little bit better quality and a little bit more useful that's gonna last them longer. It's worth the investment. It'll Dude. last longer. But beyond that, like it it changes how you play. Like yeah. being on stage and play like being not being able to play with confidence in the equipment you're using. Yeah completely changes the vibe on stage dude these people do not care though that's the problem that's the problem is like they just are like look it's just a band it's just background music and they don't know they want people to dance and hang out and party and drink and it's like well if you want that level of energy and you want the band to deliver on that scale Mm. give them the equipment that will help them do that if you give me a piece of garbage yeah it's not gonna it's not gonna they don't it's Dude, it's a weird situation. It's like it's like the guy sweeping the floor is just like, yeah, but this broom isn't working very well. And they're like, it doesn't matter. Just sweep the floor. It's like yeah, their biggest it, thing is like... Even if it takes them five more hours to yeah, do it yeah, it's like it would with it's a like, better broom. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're, they just don't care. Like As long as people are gambling and drinking and like spending money, the guy that's playing the drums is so low on the totem pole that it's just like they don't even acknowledge it. It sucks. But it's like, I've wanted to write letters. I've wanted to like, there's times where I'd get so mad and I'd just be like, I can't do my job. And like, you're not allowing me to do my job. And I like, I hit the symbol and a symbol doesn't trigger. Like, why can't we just have real drums? I know how to play quiet. And it's just like, no, mm-hmm. no. So I feel you. I feel you. Um, uh, so my week. Well, Phil, what happened? Might as well get on my soapbox. I ain't trying to hear that right now. I have three soapboxes for this one segment. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> Funky Phil is producing 100% yes so far. <laughs> Our poll is 100% yes on using this snare right now. Uh, that's crazy. Well, I don't think that many people have seen it yet. <laughs> it might be one person. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check, check we'll yes. Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, well, actually, I have, so I guess I would be yes. <laughs> These people don't know how it sounds, though. That's the problem. <laughs> um, okay. Soapbox. Funky Phil, I need, you, I need your full attention. Okay. I'm, I'm paying attention. Sorry. <laughs> I had regular gigs this week. No, I didn't have regular gigs. I had a gig with my big band. Yes. Ska Big Band. Great yes. show. Great show. There's a lot of lot of things though about this show that got me amped and in a bad way. Uh oh. Okay. Soapbox number one. Leading up to the gig. Some weird suspicion I got throughout the week. I was on my gig on Tuesday and I was like, you know. I might want to text the leader of the band and tell him, hey, just so we're clear, I'm the only one playing my drums on Friday night. Uh Uh-oh. Nobody else is allowed to touch my Masters of Maple drums. Yeah. Okay. Well, glad I texted him that because he's like, did somebody call you? And I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, man, I like... It's weird. Your ears must have been ringing. I was literally just talking to somebody about that who was asking me if we could just use Corey's drums. Oof. 
Hey, my drummer doesn't have a drum set. Can he use Corey's? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> my drummer doesn't have a my set? My drummer doesn't have a set. Can he just use Corey's? How d- I, uh, that's perplexing on Bro, so many levels. <laughs> tell me about it. Okay, so let me paint the picture here. This band, like I've I've done a lot of direct support gigs. I've done a lot of opening gigs. I've done a lot of gigs. Okay, this particular gig I'm headlining. We are the headlining band for that gig. There's two openers, and we're the headliners. Every time I play with this big band, the opening bands always say, "Is it cool if we just use the headliner stuff?" Now, all the headliner gigs that I've done, I've never been like, "Hey, social distortion." Cool if we just use your drums. Yeah. <laughs> like we open for Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. We're a big band orchestra, dude. 20 piece, 20 plus piece band. Mighty Mighty Boss Tones had their drums on a riser. They had their keyboard player on a riser. And like they are like, we're not moving our stuff. Not once. I know their the drummer came up to me and was like, dude, Corey, what's up, man? So good to see you. And I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? And like, I wasn't once like, yo. Can I just use your drums? I would never do that. Yeah. And I have drums. Yeah. Okay, so let me paint the picture again. I'm driving from San Diego to L.A., downtown L.A. These fools live in L.A. I'm lugging my drums in my little Mazda 3 all the way up to this gig. My drums that are custom made for me, That I, my equipment that is pristine and beautiful like new aquarium heads on them everything sounds amazing my symbols everything and then these hacks are like yo we're just gonna use the headliner stuff because it's better than mine or i don't even have drums that's crazy to me no no so then i back to my conversation with the guy i'm like yeah dude no Mm -mm. nope no we're not using my stuff they're not using my stuff i'm happy to use their stuff but they're not using my stuff. No. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, well I told him that I told him that, Hey, we can't use Corey's stuff, but maybe you can just find him some drums. And then he's like, well, the, the guy who's calling him is like, well, I can probably find him some drums. Like, I think I have a drum set that he could use, but he doesn't have any symbols. Can he just use Corey's symbols? Oh God. Can you believe like, first of all, drums are one thing, but symbols. No, 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 no. Sounds like they need a new drummer, dude. No, 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 no. What is wrong with you, ZLJ? (laughs) That's crazy. No. That's crazy. You cannot even look at my symbols. Don't even think about using my symbols, dude. Not even. Well, do you have any old symbols that he can use? No. Why is this my responsibility? Like, I have all my stuff. That is insane. I got hired to this gig. (laughs) I'm not going to, like, baby. I didn't get hired to babysit and provide equipment for the opener. (laughs) Who does that? Well, do you have any <laughs> old symbols that he can buy? I'm like, no. Go to no. drum flip. <laughs> go to drum flip. I go, I can get him in touch with somebody. He's right down the street from me. If he wants to buy symbols, he can go to drum flip. He could get a drum kit and symbols. And he's like, well, that's what I told him, just you know, that it's not going to happen, but maybe they can talk to the like direct support band. Okay, so he does that. He just uses the direct support drums guy stuff direct support guys drums and that was that but i've done so many gigs with this band and it's always the same thing is it cool if we just all use your stuff and in the past i'm like oh man like a lot of these guys i know yeah so the last time i did it was this gig in riverside i'm not going to mention the band but i was pissed after this gig um so it was a smaller stage again a huge 18 20 piece orchestra huge huge band small stage Hey, is it cool that like we're playing in Riverside? The band that's direct supporting us is from Riverside. They live in Riverside. Oh, is it cool if we just use that? Use your guys' stuff. So I've known these guys for years. I'm like, I don't want to be a jerk. Yeah, it's cool, man. I set my stuff up, have it all dialed, tuned the way I want it, everything. These fools start playing. They're wasted drunk, oh, no. wasted, belligerent, drunk fools. Uh. Hey, man, yeah, you're, I like your kit, man. It sounds really good, dude. Um, I just evened out the toms a little bit, though. I just tuned them up a little bit. Oh, and no. I, bro, I just adjusted this and that. And like, I'm like, you tuned my drums? Like, yeah, man, they sound a little bit more e- equal now. The toms just need to be evened out a little bit. But yeah, dude, kit sounds really good, man. Like, 
Ugh. Dude, I was fuming. I was like, the way they addressed it, there's just no respect, dude. Just hammered my drums. Like, probably the same drummers that play the Elisis drums and break them <laughs> is wh- who was playing my drums that night. Uh. And I was, I was so mad. And I'm, so after that gig, I'm like, no. No more. Absolutely not. I don't care who it is. I don't care. No one is using my stuff ever anymore. That's so disrespectful and so not happening anymore. Um, we played another gig uh, in Orange County. Same situation. So I set my stuff up, and then they're like, you don't need to strike your drums. Just leave it there. Cool. It was a festival gig, so all the other drummers had to set up in front of me. I had my stuff, cymbals on, everything done, dialed, ready to go for me to just walk up, sit down, start playing. Yeah. Dude, I go back to sit down behind my drums. Everything is adjusted. The floor tom is like leaning over. The cymbals are super tall. Like the, everything is, the, the throne is like all the way down. Like... I'm like, dude, I asked the sound man, dude, who played my drums? He's like, no one. And I'm like, bro, look at my, look at my drums. They're totally different. And uh, so some drummer just walks up and is like, these look good. I guess I'll just play these and started adjusting stuff. That's so whack. I'm like, what do you think? I just set my drums up for you? Dude, That's what world nuts. do these fools live in? Who I, are these people? I don't know. That's insane. That's crazy, dude. Dude. That's crazy. I mean, I've, I've. I've definitely shared my equipment and I've used other people's equipment. I've like even usually it's like respectful talk. Yes. You have like I've exactly like when I've played a like a re- somewhat recent show, I reached out to the other drummer because there was like a really short window of time to switch over and yeah. it wasn't like a huge gig or anything. It was just like, yo, you want to use my drums or I could use yours, but I'm down to share equipment just so it's less, yeah, less, you know, downtime between the bands. And they're cool, you know, let me use their drums or, but yeah, it's got to be a, a really like respectful conversation right. that you come to terms with. There's etiquette. Yeah, there's etiquette. You don't just. And it's like, for me, when I've done that, it's like the same thing. There's a conversation that's be, to be had. Like, it's like, hey, like, it's like that. If it's the mu- it's a mutual thing and the drummer's actually a real drummer. Then it's like, okay, hey, like we can use your stuff or we can use mine. And, and, you know, and, and normally it's like, yeah, man, adjust whatever you want. Just make yourself at home. Y- you know, when it's a real drummer, you know, yeah. you know, when it's like a respectful guy that's in the same position as you. He has good equipment that he uses for his livelihood. Yeah. These guys are not like that. They're like weekend warrior opening band guys that are just like, yeah, like great. I've never played a drum set this nice, you know? And it's like, <laughs> beat it dude beat it just don't even talk to me um and so yeah but if i ever do that if i ever share a a kit with somebody else like there's a couple rules man i will make the adjustments the way i need to make them so that i can get through my show if i have to tune it's like minimal tuning like it's normally somebody that doesn't know how to tune their drums so i'm like let me just uh get this like overtone out so i can play my gig you know, or I'll like dampen whatever I need to. But then when I'm done, everything is back the way as much as I can remember the way that yeah, it you put was. It back. I put it back. And so, you usually probably ask about tune and be like, hey, do you mind if I just like try to yeah. get these a little exactly. know, dialed in? But I don't just do it. Yeah, you don't just go cranking away. No. <laughs> like, I'm going to, I really want the snare to pop. I'm yeah, gonna... no, no, no. And that's <laughs> the thing. I'm always using my own snare, my own, yeah. my own symbols, like no matter what. But like, if if it's somebody else's kit, like even if I sit in, like I sat in at a jazz like jam, dude, when I was done, lowered the snare back to where the other drummer had it, like lowered his throne back to where he had it, tilted the tom the way he had it, and then I'm like, thank you so much for letting me play your drums, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. That's it. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't... Ugh. And you treat their drums with respect, dude. You don't freaking bash the crap out of their heads that they spent money on. Yeah. Uh... So that's my that was my real official soapbox. I have two more, Phil. All right. I ain't trying to hear that right now, dude. That's nuts. No drum set, bro. Who no cymbals. does that? I don't know. My drummer has no drums. <laughs> <laughs> How do you have a gig? Like, yeah. How do you, I don't know. I mean, I I think this guy's gotten out of the game a little bit. Like, I've known this dude for a long time, and he's had he's had some rough rough times. So I think he's gotten out of it. 
and gotten into it and gotten out of it. But as long as I've known this guy, it's been like that. Yeah, man, I don't have no drums. Can you, can I just use yours? I'm like, no, nobody can use mine. Yeah. Um, speaking about how amazing these drums sound, I got another soapbox. Wait, about your own drums? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the day of soapboxes, dude. That's <laughs> not what you think. I ain't trying to hear that right now. Dude. Those drums sounded so good with those Aquarian heads on it. This was like a bigger stage. This is a weird soapbox. No, I'm well, because it's <laughs> it's about backhanded compliments. Oh, uh, this is a quick soapbox. Anyways, before I get into that, I have to comment on how stinking amazing these drums sounded. I played two gigs this week with like full mic up setup. I yeah. use the same drum setup, same everything. That's like the opposite of my week. Dude, that Force 10 on the 14-inch floor tom is amazing. Dude. Yeah? Sounds amazing. Is it, so you just, you just did this mix setup, right? Where you, where you, what, refresh my memory. Okay, What's I your got, tom breakdown I got, for your heads? Uh, so, t- so this gig, I used a 12 and a 14. I okay. used the um, Force 10 on the 14 and the Response 2 on the 12. So the Force 10 is a two-ply... Of 10, 10 mil. mil, yes. Well, their normal one is like, a f- what, 10 and 7? I think so. That's what I think the um, the, the pr- response response 2 is. Okay. And then I have response 2 on the snare. Um, still could be a little ringy, ringier for me. I think I want to try what your your heads are. Um, what are super 2? Super 2 on my snare um, to get a little bit more ring out of it. I used to use the, uh, the black... Um, uh what's the uh what's the jazz guy single ply um Dijonet. the jack Dijonet um black on that snare drum but it still wasn't right mm. i used to use an evans g2 on my snare drum and i got the ultimate perfect sound that i was looking for so i it's been a constant battle trying to find snare heads for with aquarian for me just because i want that ring for that for my other snares they're dialed but this snare in particular, I cannot find that ring. Mm. I can't get that enough ring out of it. Might be just tuning on my end too. But uh, dude, these these drums sounded. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how like that. Like what's in my head was what was coming out. Okay, so my soapbox was set my drums up record time because I was hit traffic and was late getting there and tuned them up really quick. Boom, boom, sound great. Get done, and the sound guy, I think he was like a stagehand. He wasn't really the sound guy. Or maybe he was like the front of house sound guy for everyone else, not for us. I noticed this guy kept looking at my drums, like kept looking at them. Okay. And he'd like walk up to the stage, check out the bass drum, see the, like the label or whatever, the badge. And he was just like kind of like shaking his head, yeah. Like, yeah. And then like walked away. And then, so then it comes time to like strike the drums and take them off the stage and um start taking them off he's like i really like your drum kit man i'm like oh thanks he's like that's one of the best uh this is probably my favorite masters of maple kit that's ever come through here and i'm like really i'm like oh thanks man that's that's cool he's like both in looks and sound it looks amazing and it sounds amazing and man really great thank you so much he's like yeah those masters of maple drums are really hit and miss (laughs) <laughs> what <Yeah. laughs> and i'm like really <laughs> i'm like wow you just like took your compliment to me and just really like just took it away didn't you like i'm like wow really i'm like huh and he's like well you know i mean yeah a lot of them that come through here they don't sound that great but yours sounds really great i'm like that's a weird thing to say I, I mean, obviously, he didn't put two and two together that, like, I, like, am endorsing Masters of Maple, and I think really highly of them. And, yeah. like, I mean, obviously, I think highly enough to get a kit, but this guy purely didn't know what he was talking about. Like, seriously, was just like, look, I'm biased, okay? I know I feel strongly about Masters of Maple, you know, above any other drum set because that's what I play. But this guy had no clue. No, Okay, so he says that, and I just go... <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I guess, you know, that's your opinion. That's cool. And I'm like, you know, I've, I said, I've, I, I've, I said, I've 
played a lot of Masters of Maple Kits, and I haven't really had any complaints about any of them. I'm like, I, I've, I said, well, I had one that like I didn't quite like the Toms because it was a rock set. It was like a rock setup, and it was like a vintage rock setup, so the Toms didn't have a lot of like ring and tone to them. It just wasn't my style. But for that style, it was still a killer drum kit. Yeah. And um, I'm like, so I've, I've pretty much liked everything that they've had and, and um, had no complaints. And I said, but this one in particular, this is my favorite too. You know, my, my kit. I said, it's, um, I said, I just love this kit, you know? And he's like, yeah, it's really cool. He's like, so I think when I was setting my kit up to play, he was like, so are they making their own shells yet? <laughs> what? <laughs> And I'm like, uh, yeah, man. I'm like, they've actually always been. <laughs> and he's like, oh, really? Uh, and I go, well, yeah, they have a shop right here, like in the valley, man. Like, and they build their own stuff. And they like, I said, so these are, these are like, I go, they use all kinds of exotic woods. And I'm like, these are mahogany and gum maple and, and like some other stuff too. But I go, I don't really remember right now offhand, but I'm like, I mean, the proof is in the playing, man. They sound great, you know? And, and he's just like, yeah, well, yeah, I really like the way yours look. And I really like the way they sound, you know? And I'm just like, all right, yeah, thanks, man. I'm just like, whatever, bro. <laughs> like, dude, maybe you know about what you're going to, what you're saying before you like start talking, dude. That's so funny. He was like, totally like trying to like talk drum shop with me. Are they making their own, like asking the usual questions? They make yeah. their own shells. Like, you know, I'm like, bro just let's just not like you freaking you probably i don't know what you like or what you play but i notice a lot of sound men do that they go like yeah i have a blank like you know try kind of kit and i really love the way it sounds in the studio but man this kit sounds great you know and i'm like yeah yeah thanks <laughs> it's funny because like, i feel like obviously different companies and the quality of workmanship matters a lot yeah but I feel like a lot of it has to do with the drummer, mm -hmm. their ability to tune, and their head choice. Right. On how, like, you can make, I mean, I mean like, you're, like, say your kit, you could put different heads on that and tune it completely different. Right. Sound totally different. Totally different. You could hand it to someone who has no idea how to tune drums, and they could make your drums sound horrible, probably. Right. <laughs> right. Like, even though they're, like, spectacular and Dude. they should sound great, but... A horrible drummer can make them sound horrible still. Yeah. I'll tell you, my kit sounds completely different than it did when I had the other heads on it. Yeah. Um, night and day. Night and day, like, it's not even the same drum kit. And it took me a little while to get used to it. Um, but what I love about this setup right now is when it's mic'd up on a big stage, like on a like on a proper sound system in a big stage i don't i've never played a drum kit that sounds that good nice and i i honestly mean that like i am like so like impressed by the way these like the aquarian setup that i have on my kit and the way my kit sounds is i've never had a kit that sounded that good it's crazy that's awesome i'm stoked so i haven't i haven't used the bigger like i haven't used the 16 on a stage before like i almost always use the 14 Actually, no, I have, but I don't know if I've used that seven, sixteen with this, with this drum, with this head on it. Yeah, with the Aquarian Force Ten on it. Um, so yeah, that was a quite a funny, a pretty funny soapbox where this moron <laughs> sound guy, <laughs> these drums were hit and miss, bro. You don't obviously know what you're talking about. Uh, you don't know. Maybe he, maybe he just, maybe is some. A lot of these guys don't know how to tune. You know. Yeah. All right. Phil. Right I got one more. Oh, man. I know. It's a day of soapboxes. I got quite a few more, but this is the last one regarding the same show. Okay. Okay, here we go. I ain't trying to hear that right now. Same show. Okay. Same setup. Let's talk about the other opening band, the direct support band. Okay. Okay. This so... Is this the this same is the show guy where the guy didn't have a drum set? Yeah, this okay. is the guy who did have a drum set though. Oh, okay. Okay. So um so this show's in LA. Okay. Set up my drums, do my sound check. 
you know, can we get like kick drum? Can we get snare? Can we get toms? Blah blah blah. Can you play the whole kit? Cool. Yeah. Boom. 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 That kind of thing. You know, nothing spectacular. Yeah. Not trying to gospel chop it up. I'm not trying to show off. I'm trying to give the sound man a sound check. Yeah. Okay. But when I'm setting up my drums, there's a little bit of like, you know, messing around, trying stuff, getting some tones, and then like trying some wacky patterns and stuff to feel how my drum set feels, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's that. Cool. Done. Strike the drums, blah, blah, blah. Move off. Brotherhood of drums, right? Like, I see the other drummer setting up. I'm in the audience. He's setting up. He's mean mugging, dude. Mean mugging. Really? So I wave, hey, what's up, man? How's it good? going? Yeah, good to see you. All right, please. Because I'm trying to keep it like, I'm trying to live it, Phil. I'm trying to live it, all right? Yeah. Brotherhood of drums. Yeah. I ain't like that. Yeah. I know you're setting up in front of me. And believe me, I've set up in front of other drummers that are headlining over me, too. Like, I'm going to show this fool. Was he just mad because he, he, he wasn't allowed to use your drums? Uh, no, he had a nice kit. He okay. had a nice, he had a nice ki- uh, Tay kit, you know, 20-inch kick. Okay. Um, he was just opposite of what I'm about. He was opposite of the camaraderie. We're all drummers. Dude, like, ugh, it is funny, dude. He, so he sets up his stuff, couldn't set up fast enough, like, before I left the room and just was going for blood, dude. Going for blood, just trying everything he could do to, like, show off. Just gospel chops. This dude was a good drummer. Like, no denying he was a fantastic drummer. Yeah. But, bro, come on. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for that. All right, can you just give me the whole kit? Like um that's your sound check, bro? That's your sound check? <laughs> like come on, dude. Like I'm not impressed. I've seen a lot of good drummers. I've had a lot of great drummers on my show, bro. Yeah. Like Plus, I, does, is that how he plays when his band actually plays? No, it's a ska band. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like you don't want to I mean, I, I guess I could see if, like, if you're, like, you know, some thrash metal band and, yeah. and they really, the sound guy needs to know that you're going to be doing blast beats and, yeah. you know, all sorts of stuff. No, it's completely not what he was playing for that show. Yeah. So I'm like, it's, dude, you want to impress me? Show me how well you can play this music. And he couldn't play that music. Oh. Like, he was terrible at that kind of music. But he was a good drummer. Really good. Did a solo that I was like, wow, he's great, man. Like, the best drummer I've ever seen? No. So why are you trying to prove that you're better than me, bro? Like, fine. You're better than me. Great. Good for you. High five. I'm stoked for you. You know how many drummers are better than me? <laughs> like, everyone. There's so many people. Like, I purposely set up sheds where everyone in the room is better than me so I could freaking be humbled and be able to play and learn from them. Yeah. So stop trying to impress me, dude. You're opening for me. <laughs> you know? Like... Yeah. No matter how you twist it, you're not going to freaking be like, man, you're great. You actually want to play with us instead of Corey? Do you want to take my gig? Yeah. It's Go like, for it. What are, you do- what are you thinking, dude? I don't know. Get out of here. That's such an L.A. thing to do, man. Yeah, that's so weird. Like, I hate. that's what I hate about L.A. That's, this is so stupid, dude. Like, you set up as fast as you can, and you're just like, and, and it's like, what am I supposed to do? I'm just like. So he didn't bro down with you at all. Not a, didn't no talk like, to me the whole up, night. Man? No, didn't talk to Nothing. me the whole night. Mean mug the whole night. And you guys are sharing a stage. Yeah, I moved my drums for him. That's I didn't lame. have to. I Ooh. didn't have to. The the sound people were like, "You don't have to move your drums," and I'm like, "No, I, I want to. It's cool." Like, I hate when drummers won't move their drums for me. So I want to move my drums for this guy. Yeah. Sorry, you can't play my kit. Sorry, but you know, you're dude. Dude is a well rounded like polished drummer this dude had everything in his arsenal he was Mm -hmm. great really great drummer bro i don't need to be impressed dude i have nothing to do with your show and your set and your i'm not gonna you're not gonna further your career by impressing me i don't like that i don't i don't like the show off sound check yeah i I don't like the outdo you sound check now have i done that before (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. But that's normally a chip on my shoulder when I'm like, I should be in that guy's position. Well, that's probably what he was thinking. He couldn't, though, because he sucks at playing Scott. <laughs> he probably couldn't read the charts. But it's the, I mean, the mentality is the, the issue. 
I know? just uh I don't think it doesn't matter how good you are. You never should have that that attitude, right? No, yeah, never. <laughs> I I've really grown out of that, dude. Yeah. I've really grown out of that. There is times where like I have to show it through my show, like th- show it on um like when we perform, I have to give it my best and kind of outdo the headliner bands. Like for example, when we when Shuffle and Bang, my band, opened for two bands that I've toured with a lot and they are using other drummers on that gig i went for it that night but i didn't mm-hmm. go for it like i'm gonna sh- go for blood and gospel chop and, like play irrelevant stuff for the genre of music but my show was like complete like i'm gonna blow these guys doors off with my band you know what i mean i'm gonna show oh, yeah. that we're the opening band and we shouldn't be oh yeah the, I, I know i mean of course you want to you want to you want your band to stand out right. and be awesome and, you know, I feel hold, like that's, hold its own. That's like a business move, you know, for your band. Like you have to, we're opening the show for a reason because we are, you know, um, trying to further our, yeah, you know, career or whatever as a band. But this was not that. This was like one-on-one drummer vibing another drummer for the sake of vibing. And so I told a few people, like I was sitting there talking to somebody like in the audience, like while I was sound check. And I was just shaking my head and they're like, what? And I go, dude, I'm like, this dude's a great drummer. I'm like, but I go, this is such a drummer thing to do. He's just, he's, he's showing off right now. And they're like, oh really? I'm like, yeah, dude. And they're like, I'm like, he's totally showing off right now and trying to like prove that he's like a better drummer. And I'm like, and he's, he's playing a lot of the licks that I was doing during soundcheck, but like trying to do a more like more whatever the word is like intricately or complicated or whatever he's trying to further them um and uh it's it was funny it was funny i don't know what this dude's name is i don't care really i thought he was a great drummer and like if that's what you were looking for recognition from me that you're a great drummer then freaking high five dude you're a great drummer <laughs> like, what do you want me to do do you want me to like be intimidated by you i've been doing this for too long I've been doing this on too many stages. I've been in your position opening for other bands way more than you have, dude, because I know that like I'm, I'm good where I'm at. I'm good. You can, you can play every chop you can imagine in front of me. And I'm going to be like, wow, that was dope, but I'm good. I have my, uh, I have my sound, my drums, my ability. I'm comfortable with it, dude. And I want to learn, like, I want to learn from you and like, I'll take it as that. And I'm stoked on you because you're a drummer. We can be bros because you're a drummer, but you don't have to like do it that way. Yeah. I wonder if it's, I don't know. Cause you mentioned it being an LA thing. Yeah. I I feel like that's what I said. I know. It's like it, I don't, I'm sure there, there are plenty of great, awesome drummers that are not vibey like that. Yeah. But I feel like. Yeah, it's got to have something to do with that, like oversaturated scene. Where I think so. So many people really giving it their all, and no one. There's not enough room for everyone up there. Yeah. I feel like, like, so, like, people are just like trying. They really are trying to steal people's gigs. Absolutely, and like, but it's like when you don't have that attitude, it's like there's. It's more of a peaceful thing. It's like you're not. You're just you're playing your gig and you're making your money and you're doing your thing. And you're like, man, I'm happy for you that you're doing it too. You know, it's like, you don't have to like, I don't want to compete with anybody. Like I don't, that's the difference between working in San Diego. And that's what I was telling everybody that night is like, I just don't get LA, man. I just don't get going and opening for a band and and having that mentality of like, I'm going to show this guy. I'm going to show this whole place. Like I, I, I appreciate the like spunk, you know, like the ambition to like really not be afraid to prove yourself. Yeah. But it's not a prove yourself situation. This isn't a shed. This isn't like it's, it's, I understand like that you, you want, I don't know. I, I've, I've had those same feelings of like, I want to prove how value might prove my value, I guess. And prove like that this band has a really great drummer. That's a drummer thing to do. It's, it's really how we are. But at the same time, I, I don't need to do that, man. Yeah. I don't need to do that. And yeah. like, if, if, you know, like I said, if you're trying to impress me or somebody else, I'm sure we're all, we're very proud of you. We're very impressed, dude. The funny thing is my, my dad was like, 
talking to his girlfriend and she's like, he hates this music. He hates playing ska. And like, he's really, yeah. And I'm like, well then don't play it. Like another thing, you know, like, why are you up here trying to fit a round peg in a square hole, dude? Yeah. Or square peg in a round hole or whatever they call it. (laughs) Yeah. Just find another gig that fits you, dude. You know, but you're living LA and it sucks doing that. You're not, he's not quite there to be the gospel chop dude. And you know, so whatever, dude, whatever. Mm. But she's like, Oh, I really love the way you play. You're like, you're so passionate. And I can tell like, you love, like you love what you're doing. And I'm like, cause I do, I don't need to like be up there with a chip on my shoulder, like showing everybody how dope I am. Like, do you think I'm dope? Thank you. You don't think I'm dope? Beat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Finally. I'm trying to hear that right now. So I got a a message from Tosh oh, uh, about the snare, the holy snare. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, F no. You and know you of, would, and Tosh. A bunch of <laughs> <laughs> you know you would, Tosh. You know uh, you live I, for it. <laughs> Thump drum playing fool. You know you love that. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, this is a very. It seems like a very Tosh sound and I mean a Tosh looking snare. What you think? He loves all those like fluorescent cover colors and stuff. I don't think any of his drums got holes in them though. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. At least holes like that. That thing's like it's more hole than drum, dude. It sounds terrible, Phil. It sounds terrible. I'm trying to tell you. It's there's no way around it. You try to tune it, it sounds terrible. I've I've never found the right combination of drum heads. Oh, it's 50-50 now. Oh boy, that oh, means two yeah. people. One person said no, one person said yes. <laughs> <laughs> this snare drum, I played a yellow one that was it's called the Swiss G snare. I played a yellow one that was is yellow and white and it was Ooh. like it looked like Swiss G's. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about the snare. It's Six and a half or seven by 13. Mm. It has holes all over it. White hardware. White hardware. Red sparkle wrap. <laughs> Red sparkle wrap on the inside and outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that means there's just no tone being. It's just basically whatever this stuff is made out of. Fiberglass. I don't know. The, the craftsmanship is very good. The wrap on the inside and the outside is done very well very yeah it's clean and then they drilled holes all throughout it with different sizes huge holes huge holes giant ones small ones little ones medium ones they just drilled holes throughout the whole entire thing every piece of hardware on this drum set is white Mm -hmm. even the throw off is white (laughs) (laughs) and then the then the sparkliness of the red glass flake sparkle uh 13 by 7 i believe it sounds bad. It sounds bad. <laughs> uh, I haven't found the right head. I've tried to loosen it and play it. I've tried to tighten it and play it. Tight, tighten down. It sounds like a straight, pure timbali, dude. Yeah. But the the weird thing about this is because there's no like the sound is just the vibrations are escaping out of all the holes. It makes the snares on the bottom really weird. Like they don't vibrate correctly. Really? It makes it super weird. So if you loosen them, it's okay. But if you tighten them, it just sounds so weird. I kind of want to hit it with a stick. Do you well, have... you will when the show's yeah. done. But they w- maybe if the people want to hear it. Okay. Here's my hand on it. Oh, boy. Huh. Ugh. It has some overtones right now. It's an old head. It mm. has a piece of... It has a Memphis flag on it, like one of those duct tape, you know... Um, like little dampeners on it yeah and it still rings that rings that much it sounds weird but it's tuned really bad right now i use this thing on warp tour and then i used it with this band and so there's like it's it's gross this snare is gross dude (laughs) um but it is like it is an art piece it's striking it definitely grabs your your attention yeah you can you look at it and you're like well that's different (laughs) Uh, it's a collector's item, man. It's a collector's <laughs> item. I, I'm going to put this on a shelf one time when we when we have the brigade space. Yeah, it's going to be one of the snares on the racks that you can use for anything. With the volcano snare, I got some wacky snares, you dude. You do have some crazy snares. Yeah, and I want to keep it going. I want to just keep getting creative snares. Yeah, I would love to get a weird, crazy like Back to the Future snare from SJC or something. <laughs> Back to the future, like a rap. No, yeah. like they've made some crazy like 
where like it has two DeLorean doors on the side of the snare that open up. What? Yeah. <laughs> really? Like Yeah, yeah, like wings or something, like a, a Star Lambo Wars snare. snare. Oh! Now we're talking. That'll be a dope snare drum. Yeah, with the scissor doors. Oh, I don't even know how that would work on a snare. Well, I didn't know how this Swiss cheese thing you would work, open, but it worked. You could just open a door and throw a mic right inside. <laughs> <laughs> uh that i'm telling you dude this snare it, i've played a lot of gigs with this snare and like there's one ska band that i used it that it just rang the right way for this band but it's a really bad it's a bad snare i should have listened to them when they i got some weird snares from from spawn i have this one and then i have a 40 ply snare that actually sounds good 40 ply 40 ply snare it's why what the heck was that era of me was so weird that is a weird like why choice. why couldn't i just get like a black beauty kind of snare from spawn or like a just a regular 10 ply like i mean i'm sure that 40 ply really cracks it cracks it's i played it not too long ago and i was like actually this snare actually sounds good it's, it's like i use that snare that was my exclusive snare for years whoa yeah but um it is what it is. You know what? That volcano snare that we were talking about a couple couple weeks ago. That's another like it's a borderline. Like, is this snare like ugly? Is it too much or is it cool? Yeah. But it sounds pretty good. Yeah. It's a unique snare. Yeah. That one's got a 13 inch top and a 14 inch bottom. bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it's a weird orangey reddish color. Unique yeah. snare. I was gonna snell when I bought that snare, that was a twelve hundred dollar snare. <sighs> and now it's probably worth like a hundred bucks, but like That's it's crazy. probably it's probably a four hundred dollar snare now, um, but I uh, th- it's like it's not costing me anything to hold on to that snare, so I'm just gonna hold on to it. I'm just gonna keep it because I like it. Like whether I'm I ever use it again, whether I use it again or not, that snare is just gonna stay on my shelf and keep it. I'm just gonna keep it just because it's unique. And I like it. And it's the way I feel about this one. I was going to trade this one at drum flip a while ago for some, for a symbol. And I was like, pulled it out of my car and he started looking at it and he's like, well, it's unique. Somebody would definitely buy that. But he's like, I can only give you like, I don't remember what it was like 150 bucks or something. Ooh. And I was like, mm, no, nah, I'll just keep it. I'm yeah. like, why get rid of it? I, I would regret it. I, I'm, it's ugly and it's, but it's unique. It's different. It's a conversation piece. Yeah. It's at best. It's a conversation <laughs> piece because Lord knows it sounds terrible. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I played my uh, copper. I think, is it copper or is it, it's not brass. It's, gosh, what is that snare, dude? It's like a Tama hand hammered. I think it's brass. Is it? I don't know. I don't remember what it is, but. Um, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was a first that was a big one um so i played that snare that's that okay my masters of maple snares those are dope snares man that freaking trash talk is so dope that thing's rad oh man that snare sounds so good it's not versatile enough like i said though so like if i want to crank that thing down and play like a tightly tight pop gig that's not the snare if I play like a rock gig or a jazz gig, oh man, that snare is great. So great. So great. That thing sounds so good. That thing is sweet. I, that might be my favorite snare right now. Um, I'm kind of in love with my 15. Yeah. I've been using that a lot. It's so great when you find a snare that's just, that's my snare. It can sound like anything. But dude, throughout my years of playing, there is nothing like that Tama copper, I think. Uh, What's another metal that's brown? Not brass. Bronze? Bronze. Really? Bronze? It's bronze. Okay. I think it's a Tama PBS 55 bronze. 5 by 5 I mean, 5.5 by 14 power metal bronze snare drum. I think. But this is a hammered version. The hammered version of it. Um, It's from the 90s. One millimeter. Uh, thickness on the shell, ten lug. It's my ultimate favorite snare. Nice. I've had it since the nineties. 
And um, I've played it on every recording. I've talked about this snare, snare extensively. It's my favorite snare, dude. Nice. I used it on so much stuff, and I used it again this week. So I've had this snare from since the 90s. The only thing I've ever changed on this snare is the, the head, of, of course, multiple times. I've never changed. I've never had to do anything to it. Nothing has ever failed on it. It's just... The qual- it's like solid. It's a solid snare, man, and it's a it's it's got it's my sound. It's just it's what I use. Gotta get Masters to make you a bronze one. I know, hammered bronze. You hear that, Masters? <laughs> His favorite snare drum you did not make. <laughs> well, it's because I've played that snare for years and years, <laughs> decades. Um, but I love that trash talk. Yeah, you know? that thing's amazing. If they could make me another copper version of like the same version of my snare that copper i mean that bronze bronze, bronze yeah. um i would i would love that it's probably not expensive bronze isn't expensive <laughs> it is yeah it's really expensive well maybe i should melt this thing down and like <laughs> yeah bronze yeah bronze is expensive um yeah i love that snare man uh it's from the 90s that's crazy very versatile though like i can i've played it like on i've just played that snare on everything i love it so much um you're 15 man you love that 15 huh dude it's so good i i i mean it sounds really cool it's it sounds different than a 14 like when you like i like playing it when it's like medium to tighter Mm -hmm. for like pop stuff and it'll still have a lower fundamental note yeah than a 15 but have the same articulation i mean then have a 14 but still have that have quicker articulation so you can like get it tighter without it sounding all cranked out yeah and it goes low as hell and i really like the additional surface area for oh, brush yeah. work i didn't even think about so that. when you're doing like jazz stuff you got, i just got so much more room to push yeah them around on there it's awesome that's cool i i um i know i just got that trash talk but um i want to get another snare i have an addiction <laughs> I love snares, dude. <laughs> the next snare that Masters of Maple drops, I'm planning on buying, and I don't know what it even is, but I heard gonna, it's going to be a hammered bronze. <laughs> if it was, I would be in like first in line. Like I'll take it. No, I definitely want a spare snare of that same one because I love it so much, and it's now what twenty or thirty twenty. I don't know how many years old. Thirty years old. So, um. I feel like I kind of need to get that snare again because it's so good. Mm. It's, it's beautiful. And then like, also when I go on tour and stuff and I bring like a spare snare, I kind of want the same spare snare, you know, maybe I just have masters of maple make one of the same specs. Yeah. And then Atama would be your backup. If yeah. You have to, I thought about trying to get one of those, um, those, those aquatic snares from vessel. Oh, I like those, those, those brass ones yeah i like those that sounds cool. so good it's a cool idea but um i really i really want to get an all brass snare ever since that doc sweeney snare ever since that snare i've always wanted to get one yeah masters of maple makes a bell brass i think they're all sold out though so they don't make anymore but oh man that's an expensive snare dude that's yeah. like a two thousand dollar twenty five hundred dollar snare but it is amazing how good that snare sounds you should get one of those I don't have that money, dude. I already owe them money, and I need to get a bass drum made. Get a credit card. Jeez. I'm trying to pay off I'm that. Just All right. Uh, let's get on the topic of the day. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, so topic of the day, Funky Phil, it's just me and you auditions, auditions. Oof. Um, I hate auditions, dude. Yeah. Auditions are stupid. Just hire me. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> just trust me. Just trust me. All right. So the question of the day is like two part. How do you approach an audition? And then the so- secondary question, the B question is, how do you dress for an audition? 
Um, this is a good question. Yeah. I got into this this week. Yeah. You had to use this, this, this stuff this week. Almost. Yeah. So the thing I hate about auditions is it's, I don't like the n- not knowing part. Like the uncertainty. The uncertainty. Yeah. Is this audition even going to happen? After I nail this audition, am I going to really get the gig? There's so many things. So yeah. I always, but I guess it's not really about that, but it's about what do you do to try to solidify getting the audition? So what's your approach to getting it? <laughs> I don't know, you, you're going to be better than me at this, man. I haven't done that many auditions. I mean, I had a, I recently had, you know, been asked to audition for a band that would have been really cool. I was really excited about it. Yeah. Um, and it, the guy that talked to me was in the band, but he wasn't the music director. Boo. Yeah. So the <laughs> mu- late, so he kept being like, Oh yeah, the music director will get a hold of you. Ended up not getting, hearing word from the music director and the, it didn't happen. But I don't know. The whole time I was like trying to not be annoying yeah. and nag him too much. Just, you know, try to, that's why I'm saying it's just a touchy situation, right? Yeah, because you want to be respectful and give them space and not be annoying, but also you want to be prepared as possible right. for for the audition. So it's it's I don't know. I mean, what do you do? All right. Well, I I don't do too many auditions. Um, I'm normally like I feel like I'm more of the guy that that they, they just know and I just they'll just hire me for the gig, you know, like and but I have done some. So there's been, there's a while, like right now I'm, I'm not, I don't really want to find, like I'm caught up with the drum brigade and, and my local gigs and a tour here and there. So I'm not really looking for that big time gig anymore. I'm, I'm kind of of the mind of if it comes along, then I'll suss it out. But I'm not really like, like doing, I'm not going to auditions every week and like, I'm not part of some agency that's going to, find me auditions and say, I just don't have time for that. And it's too stressful for me. But when I've done auditions before, I've had so many different kinds of auditions. I've had auditions where I'm like one of like 50 guys or more. And I'm like on a schedule and they're like, okay, it's your turn with this chi- type of band. And now we're going to form a different band around you. And I've done those kind of auditions where it's like, kind of like a, you're in front of a panel, you know, and you're, you're trying to, impress them with what you, whatever you're trying to read their minds on what they're looking for. And that's such nonsense. Mm. And then I've had other auditions where I just meet with somebody and like, they're just trying to get a vibe for who I am and how I am and what I do. And, and then I've had other auditions where it's just like, let's just jam, you know, and like yeah. there's all across the board. There's so many different types, you know, and, and um, I've had other auditions where I'm playing an actual gig, you know, and trying to get the gig that way. Um, for the most part, so like it, it depends on the the audition for me, but for the most part, um, the majority of the the auditions that I've had is like some material that I have to learn. And then, um, it's kind of like, I've already been recommended by somebody. So I'm, I'm, I, I feel like some of the auditions that I've had, I've had a leg up already because I have come recommended by somebody. Um, but a lot of stupid auditions have fell through for me. And that, that's what drives me nuts, especially auditions in LA drives me nuts, dude. Like, yeah. um, okay. So for the most part, I try to go in there more than prepared. Yeah, um, like have stuff memorized. Yeah. Have stuff dialed in to where it's like, okay, I know this is how they, this is like, that's the best audition for me when they give you material. And then you hear what their drummer is doing, and then you're like, "Oh, okay, I got this." Yeah. Um, I I had to do that for like a cover band, like um, like a really high end corporate cover band type of thing, um, not like a garage band cover band. And I could tell exactly they weren't ready, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. not to sound arrogant, but what their drummer was trying to do and what I know I could do, I went in there doing that, and they were just like. Pfft. They were like giving me dates when the audition was done. And I actually got that gig. That's it was what's good. Up. But I've had other ones where, um, you know, when you're in a line of 50 or more dudes and they're all just, I try to kind of be a little bit different 
and a little bit more professional than everybody else if I can. I try to separate myself. What's my product versus theirs? Mm -hmm. Most guys don't do that. They either try to impress you with their playing or they try to impress you with their costume. Yeah. You know, looking all hipster. And it might not be the fit for that band. So um, I try to go in with like what is going to work whether they change directions as far as their look or their sound. What's going to work for that? So I try to be like as far as like my style of dress, I try to be like memorable but like kind of forgettable. <laughs> like in a way that is like – I'm going to stand out as like, whoa, okay, who's this guy? But, oh, this guy is obviously into this. I don't want to do that. You want to be moldable. Yes. That was, you gave me some advice uh, uh, regarding this. Yeah, last this, week. This last, this last week audition I was supposed to have. And yeah. it was really helpful. Yeah, because I never, I never, I don't, you know, I, f- I feel like I'm trying to get better about it, but I've never really developed much of a sa- my own unique fashion look. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, all your advice was really good. It was basically to be like, right. Look professional, but not like too professional. Right. Like right. Casual, nice, but like moldable. So you don't want to yeah. commit to one look too hard. Cause then they can't see you looking like anything else. Right. I feel like there's like three parts, man. There's like 33%, 33 point whatever percent is like, obviously how you play. Can you handle the gig? But dude, that's not all of it. And um, two is like, can we get along with you? Can we like, are you a nice guy and not a crazy fool or a drug addict or, you know, whatever? Can we get along with you? For months. For months. In a bus. Yeah. (laughs) Like, that's a big deal. So you have to be able to prove that like on first impressions. Um, And then three, like, what's your look, dude? If you look like just a complete nerd. I'm sorry, dude. People put a lot, especially like in Hollywood, in LA or whatever, people put a lot of weight on your look, dude. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you could just not be the right fit for their look. I know that's a big reason why I didn't get some of the gigs because I'm just like, I'm clearly not the guy. Yeah. You know, you know, like, dude, these guys are way too like, I can dress it up. I can, I can fit, but I'm not willing to like, you're not covered in tattoos. Yeah. Piercings. Yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not a bearded hipster guy. Like I'm a hey. I'm me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's so it's that's something that I always think about is like, okay, what am I gonna be that I can fit in this situation, whether it's whether it's a, whatever, a jazz gig or a rock gig or a pop gig or whatever. How am I gonna do that? My go to specifically, this might not be everybody's go to, but uh it's just, like I said, just general. Like, I'm not going to wear any logos on my shirt. You're not going to catch me wearing a drum brigade shirt at a at a audition. I'm, I'm, I might wear a, a hat. I don't know. I might just wear crazy hair. That's like a, you know, I don't know. Like, it's just, I try to feel it out. Like, I, I, n- normally, dude, if I'm going to an audition, it's pretty safe to just rock all black. <laughs> And like kind of not wear boxy looking baggy stuff from like, you know, unless you're even if you're on a hip hop gig, you know, or something like you don't want to rock like Walmart stuff or Costco stuff for dad shoes, you know, (laughs) like you kind of want to wear like you want to look like you're in a band that is cool, like hip. You want to look like a rock star. So I always go for not a rock star, but you want to look like you can play on any stage until they're like, okay, here's what we're wearing. Yeah. So I, I typically will just wear all black and wear stuff that fits <laughs> and like not wear dad shoes, wear like, yeah. you know, nicer hipsters kind of looking shoes or you can't go wrong with black and black and white converse or black converse. Um, that's general. Like, you know, it's just general where they're not going to be like, look, it's dork. You know, they're going to be like, this looks like a guy that plays music. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's not going to work for everyone. That's not going to work for every gig. I'm just talking about a general gig. Like if I got a a call to play with, I don't know who, like, I don't know, Britney Spears or something. I'm going to go, yeah, rock. I'm going to go probably with that outfit on. Yeah. Black jeans, black shirt, black Converse or something, desert boots or something. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to try to go in with some confidence, 
Go in there as a very nice guy, not arrogant, confident that you can handle the gig in a very friendly, cordial, I can get along with anybody kind of way. Yeah. (laughs) It's all good, really good tips. And then I also like try to learn the material as well as I can. Try to get some like some uh, uh, insider information. Like I went to an... Watch live videos. Watch of the band live videos. See how they actually do it on stage. Learn yeah. some of their like things that they do, like in a live setting, and then like like if there's hits or stabs or whatever rests or whatever, you can go in there and set those up for like like with emphasis, dude. That'll blow their minds. Wow, you've been like you did your homework. That's yeah. what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes be prepared to like switch it up, like be versatile, like on. They might just go, hey, man, can we just jam on like a Led Zeppelin song or like a blues or something? And like, just can we just jam, you know, and like you have to be open to be like, yeah, man, sure. Like, you know, um, all that stuff can be prepared to not even play. Be prepared to just hang out and have some coffee, you know, and like just chat, um, you know, kind of have some stuff to like fall back on, like uh, what you do what you're into, what kind of music you're into. But believe me, dude, like I've been on the other end where I'm like auditioning other people. You can tell right away that when they're telling you what you want to hear and when they're not really into what you're into. Yeah. But it's better if it's like, I'm really into this. So I'm not afraid to be like, yeah, man, I've like, I grew up playing and listening to ska and reggae, you know, and punk and like, I'm not, you know, I'm, whatever be honest because they're like really that's cool man but if you're like dude i'm just like really 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 into like hootie and the blowfish <laughs> like really <laughs> like what's your favorite song oh man i just like them all you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. they're gonna be able to They'll tell know. so yeah uh um, be yourself be yourself dude because if it's not the right fit yeah. it's not the right fit and that could be that's that could suck for you too even right. if it is a good gig yeah like man if, if you end up committing yourself to like a couple of years yeah, in a horrible situation. It still sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, there's been a couple of like auditions where I, I got insider information from somebody in the band that like to give me like, like, there was like a live CD that he gave me, and I, dude, I learned the crap out of this thing where I knew I could go on stage and play that whole set right now, and when I went on the audition, I was already doing like their tie-ins and stuff where they were like, whoa. Like they were impressed and, but, um, but the thing that ruined it for me on that audition is I didn't do what they told me to do. They said for your audition, just bring kick snare hi hat. And I brought a full kit. Oops. And they were like, Oh, you want to set up your whole kit? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I brought it and it wasn't what they said. Oh, and I was, I was young. I was probably like 20 or 21. And, um, so they were like, yeah, man, you can really play, you know, you really learned our stuff and you know, that's really cool. But yeah, didn't but we get didn't it. want to see any toms up in here. Yeah, and they and I, I blew it. I blew uh, it. <laughs> that sucks. So um, I don't think I had it anyways. I think I was too young for them. It was like an older guy band, uh, um, and uh, it was it was a pretty big band though. It was a pretty like it was a pretty legit um, gig. It would have been a lot of touring and a lot of flyouts, and it would have been a great gig for me at twenty years old, man. But didn't work. Damn. Um, so and I I didn't I didn't do it. I didn't get it. But um, Dude, the most annoying thing about auditions is when they're, for me, I've had so many where they're like, you're the dude, you got the gig, we want to use you. I've, I got called by the, by the, um, the, uh, music director, like, like the next day, Hey man, everybody unanimously was very impressed with you. You're the guy. We're going to start rehearsals in a few weeks. I'll keep you posted. Never got the call. Never heard back. You know, and it's just like, dude, I put in all that work learning this stuff and I went out to audition and did everything right and it just didn't work out, you know, and it could be one little thing that somebody has the edge over you, you know, like it could be a one thing that you say or, you know, and so you just can't beat yourself up over it. You just have to like go, it wasn't meant to be. I'll get another gig. And like, I hate, I hate the ones where I'm just like hanging out and I'm like, man, but you don't even know if I can play. You're just hanging out with me. I'm drinking coffee and I, you know, and I don't even like coffee or whatever, you know, it's like, I've had those situations where it's like, cool, man. Well, yeah, we'll keep you posted. And it's just like, man, get out of here. Don't waste my time, dude. 
I just paid for parking and drove out here and spent my whole day doing this. And yeah, you could you know. have been making money. Yeah, yeah. Don't waste my time, dude. Just tell me, be straight with me. It's part of the game though, I guess, huh? That's why I don't like doing it. I don't like, I don't like auditioning. Yeah. So, so anyways, that's my move. What's your move? I mean, I'm relatively inexperienced with auditioning in yeah. general. I mean, I haven't done that many, um, but yeah, everything you said, I mean, obviously you've helped 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 me with uh, the fashion sense <laughs> but for prep work and stuff yeah learn obsessively learn the material yeah memorize it so i feel like it's usually not as impressive if you go in there with a bunch of charts it's you not got, impressive like, papers days. sitting around like they want you want to be able to go out there and own it and play it Dude, like like you wrote the drum parts right if you do that I've, I've seen so many drummers not get the gig because of that, because yeah. of like, here's how prepared I am. I wrote all the charts and it's like, dude, I don't know about you, but if you're, especially these big gigs, I don't see any drummers setting up charts before they launch into their hit song. I also feel like it's, I feel like your groove, like your feel is yeah. way more important than any feels. Right. Like any, any of that flashy stuff, I don't think really matters. It's mostly if you if you got the right feel mm-hmm. i feel like that's really important i've i've there was an audition that i went on with another drummer locally that we know and that drummer showed up this drummer was like way on another level than me like as far as his reputation and who and what he's known for and and what band he plays in and all that stuff um but he showed up to this gig and started or this audition and he know he knew everybody in the band already and then he was like, yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, give me a second and started setting up his charts. And that was already where he lost the gig. They were like, no, that's not the guy. Yeah. Very impressed. Proud of you. Glad you can read. Glad you can do all that stuff. But this is not that kind of gig. Um, when I came in, it was just kind of like, same thing. Like, we like your look. We like the way you play. Like, and then the first note, it was like a big drum fill, like kind of double bass kind of thing, even though I wasn't using double bass, but played the the lick and then played the intro and they were just like bro like different story you know where it Mm -hmm. wasn't all charted out and that's not a bad thing like you know it okay well i'll put it this way it's one thing if you show up to the audition and they throw a chart in front of you and then you read it down but if you've charted all their stuff it's probably a deal breaker for a lot of bands yeah you know that it's just i know that's crazy to think but because it's like a very it's a good uh tool to have in your arsenal but um for an audition if it if the gig calls for that then of course yeah chart out your songs and read them down and play them but um you know i'm talking like major big big touring big touring like you know things it's that's not going to impress any pop gig or no anything you know what the other thing is though too the biggest thing too, one of the biggest things is making yourself available when they need you. Yeah. Like drop what, if you really want this gig, drop what you're doing and make it happen. I blew it on a huge gig, dude, arena stadium gig. And I was teaching a lesson and I told the guy, I'll call him back in 15 minutes when my lesson is done. And that was my opportunity gone. What? And it was like, I got recommended by another drummer. The guy was just like, Hey, I was wondering if you could commit to some tour dates I have some tour dates for you if you're like available. You came recommended by this drummer. And I was just like, yeah, man, let me check my schedule and get back to you. But I'm sure I can make it happen. Just like, I would love to get some details though, you know, because who knows what kind of tour. I'm not about to sit in a van with no windows. And Mm -hmm. dude, ended up being like, I called the drummer, like, hey, man, I got a call from somebody about this tour. And the dude was like panicking, like, dude, don't mess this up. Call him back. This is a huge major tour. You got in ears, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> dude, this is huge. This is like the biggest tour you'll ever get. Don't mess this up. Call him back. Yeah. Call him back. Voicemail. Dang. Text back. Hey man, looking forward to talking to you. Really interested. Like can't wait. I'm I'm wide open. No call back. So That's crazy. I should have just taken the freaking call right then and there and yeah. put it on hold and been like, This is bigger. You have to kind of treat everything like that. You'll get the details later, man. 
If the, if it's like, yeah, man, so it's a, it doesn't pay much, but we're going to like load in my SUV and we're going to stay at campsites. Then you could be like, ah, man, I don't really do tours like that. Sorry, dude. But instead of thinking that off the bat, I should have been like, yeah, man, I'm wide open. What do you got? Let's talk about it right now. Yeah. You could always <laughs> shoot it down later. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it would have been that kind of situation. So I, I learned a lesson that day because I'd never even heard from the guy ever again mm. because of a stupid lesson that I probably made a few bucks on that phone call probably cost me thousands of dollars. Could have been something else though. Yeah. Who knows? You know, you never know. Well, that's how I had to start thinking. Like if it you could don't have been, could have had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's the thing is too, if you don't get the audition, you have to kind of think that like, dude, it's just, this wasn't my gig in the first place. It wouldn't have worked out. There's something that's going to stand in the way of it working for you. You kind of have to just be like something else will come on. Like, I'm not going to open this door. I'm just going to open another door, you yeah. know? And, um, and then maybe down the road, it'll come, it'll come around again. But all the, all the, tours that I didn't get or all the gigs I didn't get, I don't really feel like I lost anything because something else presented itself and I was still able to stay busy. Like I kind of always look at touring as like, man, you get a great tour and you're living like on the top of the world. But then when you get back, you're like scrambling because you've been absent from your normal life for sometimes months. Yeah. Dude, when I got, when I got back from warp tour, it was like weird. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do for work. I don't know where to find another gig. I don't know. I was gone for two months and like everybody just kind of forgot about me. Oh man. And so that's what I mean when you, you're on top of the world and you can stay relevant by, you know, showing on your social media that you're playing these huge arena gigs and stuff. But then you, you get home, you still need another gig, man. Mm-hmm. And um, you're waiting, eagerly waiting for the next tour. So a lot of the tours that I've lost, I'm kind of like, yeah, man, but you know, I've been kind of slow and steady instead of like on really high and then on a real low. And like, I just don't work well like that. Yeah. Um, anyways, that's my take on it. I don't know if somebody, some other people probably have different takes like, man, I would never wear all black to a audition. I would wear all white to stand out. That's your thing. That's your thing, man. That's, that's the whole point of this. I mean, overall, you got to feel comfortable. You want to, you want to go in there feeling confident in yeah. yourself. If and, you're not yourself, dude, yeah. if, if you're like, I'm going to dress like a punk rocker and you're not a punk rocker, then you're not going to be comfortable. You're not going to get it. Yeah. You know, but if you're like, Hey, this is what I would wear. Like, I feel pretty good. Maybe I'm stretching a little bit, but if you look in the mirror and you're like, Oh, I got this, then you're good. <laughs> you're going to have confidence. But yeah. like, I would, if there's any advice, dude, I would stay away from like being something, you know, like, unless it's just, you are that, like, if I'm like, I live my life, like, and I've played this music, like as like a ska dude, that's how I dress. You know, that's how I look. I, I look like a guy that listens to ska. If I'm going to a ska audition, I'm going to dress like I know how to dress for ska, you know, and that's going to work for me. If you're into metal and you live your life as metal, then dress up metal, dude. Yeah. That's what you look like. But if I go in there and try to dress all metal, that's not my style and people are going to see through that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if I wear something that I know I can get this, I know I can play this gig and I wear something that can work for metal, then it's going to it's going to be fine, you know? It's going to I'm going to be confident and it's still going to be like we can make this work, you mm-hmm. know? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, yeah. I'm bummed I didn't get to do that audition, but you know, it was cool to meet them and yeah who knows where it'll lead they're they were stoked on my playing they checked me out it might still so, come around it, it's just something might happen they might need another audition dude you're good who knows yeah <laughs> all right drum, 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 drum brigade podcast da 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 uh, da 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 See, Phil, we don't even need, we don't even need guests. <laughs> we don't need guests. But they're so fun. I know. You know what's weird I'm missing right now is that we haven't played the wall, the wheel of death for two weeks now. Dude. Yeah, we really, we'll have to get Chris to, to do it next time. Yeah. We need a, we need some guests. Um, I got to see where we're at with this snare drum poll. Oh yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's figure this out here. Ooh, 60% yes. Whoa. 40, 40% no. Wow. I have not voted yet. Neither have I. I would say yes, being that it is my snare. 
<laughs> I think you have to because you have used it. Dude, we need more poles in our life. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, this is episode 30 of the Drum Brigade show. Um, you know, hope it was worth it for you guys to just listen to me and t- me and Phil talk about soapboxes and talk about auditions and robo drums. Yeah. Um, I do have one more soapbox. Uh oh. Uh, it's not a crazy one, but it's something that I was dealing with my, with my wife. So do you want to get into it or should I just not do even go it? There? All right. Last soapbox of the day. trying to hear that right now i told you fools this is the show of soapboxes <laughs> uh i feel like i'm getting them all out and i'm not gonna have any soapboxes next week but then again who am i kidding <sighs> yeah a week's a long time <laughs> <laughs> this week is like it's been a good week but it's still been a week of like oh my gosh let's just get like that that friday gig really got me though that fool not showing up with drums <laughs> okay so I told my wife I was going to talk about this on the show. This has nothing to do with drums. This is just what my everyday life is like. The other day, my wife sends me a text. Okay. It's a text of a picture. It's an, okay. No, it's a handwritten note. I'm showing Phil right now. It's a handwritten note that says, Corey, call Kaiser gives me the number and then says, don't know why. So I'm like, who is that from? (laughs) <laughs> Meaning like who freaking writes a note and then takes a picture of it and sends it as a text message. <laughs> so I'm like, who's that from? And she's like, from Kaiser. And I'm like, Kaiser hand wrote me a note and sent it to me via text message through your phone. A post it too. <laughs> a post it note. A blue post it. Yeah. She's like from Kaiser. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and then she's like, didn't you read the note? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's confusing. You hand wrote a note and then sent that as a text message. So I'm like, a normal person would write down the number, send me a text that says, hey, call Kaiser. They just called me and then text me the number. So I can click on the number and call Kaiser right there. Not a handwritten note like when it looks like somebody else wrote this thing (laughs) and then sent me a text through her phone. I'm like, who wrote the note? That's so funny. (laughs) And she's like, she's not telling me. It's like, it's confusing. So like, um, she's like super, she's not mad, but she's like, read the note. (laughs) And I'm like, I did read the note. Who wrote the note? And she's like, I wrote the note. I'm like, why did you write me a note and send it as a text? And she's like, I'm at work. I don't have time to send a text. I'm like, but you did send a text. You sent me a picture. (laughs) You, You, so I'm like, you have enough time to write the note. Put it in your phone. Take a picture of this note. Send the picture note as a text. And she's like, it would have taken too long to write a text. And I'm like, but you, you understand why this is confusing. And she's like, I don't understand why this is confusing. Just call Kaiser. <laughs> and I'm like, but what do they want? And she's like, I wrote, don't know why. So you don't, I'm, you're, asking, you're asking me the questions that I already told you. And I'm like, I t- I'm like dude. I'm about ready to freaking scream. I'm like, why would you send a picture of an... I don't understand what your reasoning is behind this. And she's just not giving me anything. She's like, call him and find out. So I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, Kaiser, how's it going? This is Corey. You know who this is. My wife told me to call you. She's like, exactly. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, so did you call? I did call. What'd they say? It was just an automated thing that wanted general information. Like, thank you for calling Kaiser. Like... We just have a few questions like, you know, enter the phone number. So I enter my phone number. We don't recognize this phone number. I re- enter her phone number and they're like, is this Corey? I'm like, yes. And they're like, do you have this disease or that disease? No. Thank you so much for calling Kaiser. And that's it. <laughs> it's but just I'm like, a survey. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, babe, could you just like tell me what they wanted? She's like, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, so w- this is the problem we always have because we can't. <laughs> She, she, she's not giving me the answers that I want. What, what I want is her to say it was an automated message and it was like a thing that was like, are you Corey? And I said, no. And then they said, please have Corey call. That would have been enough information for me. Cause then I would have been like, oh, okay. It's probably just a survey, but a handwritten note that looks like it's from somebody else. <laughs> I'm like, did your job like uh, tell you to like, are they calling your job? Like, what the heck is this? That's uh, funny. You and guys so are hilarious. my wife is just like not getting it, not understanding. So I asked my other friend, like, what do you think 
about this. Like, and she's like, I do think it's confusing that it was a handwritten note. It should have just been a text. And I'm like, you see, you see, you, you couldn't just take an extra five seconds and write it in a text. Hey, for, babe, Kaiser called. Call him back. It takes way longer for me to send photos. Me too. I feel like, it, it, like you got to wait for it to up, upload or something. She's like, she's like explained it like, well, they called. It was an automated thing. And they were like, please have Cor- Corey call at this number. So she starts writing down the number. And I'm like, well, even if you sent a picture of the number, but texted, hey, babe, Kaiser called me. They want you to call them. I would be like, oh, okay. What do they want? <laughs> I don't know. It did, didn't say they were just asking for you. Got it. I'm calling them back. Oh, but a man. picture of it, I don't get it. You guys, I love you guys. It's <laughs> dynamic. It's so funny. Dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm so trying good. to hear that right now. <laughs> this woman, I'm telling you. I love her to death. She's amazing. She is a, she's amazing. But we have some serious things when we're trying to talk to each other. It's not serious, but... <laughs> Like where she gets so mad because I asked so many questions, but I'm like, you're not giving me the details. <laughs> She's like, like there's just random stuff like, Oh, like, yeah, so-and-so reached out to so-and-so. And I'm like, Oh really? What did she say? And like, she knows that the other person didn't reach out to her back. So she's like, I don't know. But I'm like, well, what did so-and-so say? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, dude, you can't start a story like that. You got to like, tell me, so- give me something. I don't need to know that she... I already know that she reached out to her now, but what did she say? Oh, man, that's funny. You know, and she, I'm like, even if you're like, well, she said that she reached out to her, but she never returned the, the call back or whatever, then I'm like, oh, now we can move on. But you're <laughs> leaving out that one little detail that I don't know now. <laughs> and like, so now I'm going to keep asking questions. Last night, we were going... We went out to dinner with some friends, and we're like... She's like, yeah, we're going to this place called whatever something greens or something and i'm like oh okay cool well what what kind of place is this i don't know babe i've never been there and i'm like well why did we choose this place then she's like i don't know it's in encinitas i'm like well like what kind of food do they have there like i kind of have quite a few problems like i can't just eat anything so what is this place like is it an italian place is it a sandwich place babe i don't know and i'm like well then give me some details like what (laughs) Why are you just saying we're going here like I'm supposed to know what it is? <laughs> Gosh, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. I ain't trying All to right. Hear there it right is now. again. There, there it is go. again. All right. Babe, I love you, but, you know, you just got to give me some of those details. Gosh. <laughs> All right, Funky Phil. Oh, man. It's been uh, episode 30. It's been fun just being a, you know, a non, what do you call it? Non-guest gig. Non-guest show. Yeah. It's been a lot of soapboxes, though. There, yeah, that was a lot, but it was good. It was good to get all those out. Yeah. I need. Sometimes we need a break from these guests. Bruh. Sorry, Phil. Uh, we thought we were done. <laughs> I do have a small soapbox about these freaking guests, man. <laughs> I love the guests that have come on. You guys are all great. But I have to tell you guys... I've reached out to some fools that, like, aren't the most famous, not biggest fools in this world, okay? You're not as big as you think you are, drummers. <laughs> I've reached out to some fools, and I'm like, yo, man, love what you do. Like, would you be down to come on the Drum Brigade podcast? I've had some fools not even respond, dude. Not even like, ah, uh, not really my thing. Not even like, uh, who's Just this? straight ghost you. Just straight ghosting me, dude. Ugh. I've texted a fool. I've, I've reached out to some fools. First of all, we're not asking for you to spend all day with us. We're asking for an hour of your time, dude. Uh, we're asking for you to just come on and freaking play the wheel of death with us. I've had so many people be like, oh, yeah, I'd love to, man. But like, um, yeah, man, we're going to have to like, not this week. Talk to me at the end of the month. Oh, I yeah. reach out at the end of the month. Hey, man, you still want to come on? Yeah, man, I would love to do it. Uh, just, um, man, really busy. Yeah, talk to me at the end of the month. Yeah, I've had a couple of those, too. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pin down specific yeah, dates, you know and, what? and I like, just cannot get them to commit. It seems like you're too busy. Why don't you just do what you're going to do? Because it's obviously more important than this. We're not asking for like this crazy, huge commitment. Just do what you got to do, all right? <laughs> Forget we even asked you. But even more so, if you're ghosting me, dude, you're not getting asked a second time, dude. 
And I know, dude, I know we are growing. We are growing. We are growing, Funky Phil. Yeah. And these fools are going to be reaching out to us sooner or later, being like, yo, man, when can we come on? Sorry. What? Who's this? Like, not even going to respond, bro. You didn't respond to me. I'm Dang. done with that. Dang. I'm done with that. Get over yourselves. Uh, get over yourselves. Get over yourselves. Come on the freaking show. Do yourself a favor and do us a favor. It's helping us out and we're promoting you, idiot. <laughs> Gosh. Right Breaking news, Funky Phil. Breaking news. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Breaking news. What? 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 Uh, for the SoCal Drum Show, just got a thing with from Ed. Oh, yeah. I haven't heard this, but this is what it's, he's saying. Hey guys, what's up? Ed here with the SoCal Drum Show. So we have sold almost all of our booths. We have six booths left. Um, want to talk to you about a few tips that we've learned over the years. One of them is to pre-sell your items. So if you have a bunch of gear you want to um, pre-sell and let people know what you're bringing, that's great. Just sell it beforehand, then come people come and pick it up at your booth. That's so amazing. Um, so you sell a lot of product before you even get there. Another thing is please feel free to send me pictures and product information of the products you're bringing or raffles or any signings you're doing at your booth. I would love to advertise to our base as well for you. So please send any products and pictures to us. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to send you a code specific to your business that gets 20% off tickets for the SoCal show Ooh. that you can use as much as you would like. We'd love for you to advertise. Uh, a lot of the success of the show is based on your advertising as well. So if we all help each other out, we have a huge show. Uh, show is April 14th, loaded, and it's from 9 to 1. Loadout is from 6 to 8 p.m. Thanks so much. See you at the show. Look forward to it. Have a great day. There you have it, people. April 14th. April 14th. SoCal Drum Show. Um, what is this now? I have a code 20 that gets your followers 20% off tickets for the SoCal Drum Show. We also have some free tickets to give away that we will be giving away for you guys if you want to come on. Um, we'll probably be giving some of those away to people that we want to interview on our show. Um, if you want. It's going to be a fun day. I we're, think it should We'll be. be hanging out all day. We're going to have a really cool booth set up, I think. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be dope. So, um, all right, SoCal Drum Show coming up April fourteenth. It's only a few weeks away. It's a month away. Four weeks away. Um, man, if if soapboxes aren't your thing, then this isn't the episode to listen to. But uh, you know, we had to get some things off our chest. I feel great now, man. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah, this is episode thirty, the soapbox episode. Uh, Funky Phil, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Yeah, it's been a great show. Next week, we got Anthony Smith coming on. Woo! Yeah, freaking vibes player. He rips. He rips. He's so good. An insane piano player, too. Uh, Corey Kingston, Funky Phil, Drum Brigade Podcast, episode 30. Thank you guys so much. Come see us at the SoCal Drum Show. Support the companies that we support. That's in the link below. Check it out. DrumBrigade.com. Oh, yeah. Drum Brigade. Drum Brigade. Woo! legend